here we can see some really great three-dimensional exposure of another structure which is exposed here on the beach. And so I'll just describe what I can see behind me. You can see there's some broken rocks and I'll explain a bit more about these. The fault surface is right beneath me. I'm stood on the foot wall. We've got the fault surface under my foot and then it sort of goes off, off across the beach and you can see this kind of rubbly line as it goes off. And in the hanging wall of this structure, the limestone beds are folded into kind of a little bowl. And you can see that um, we've got a big rock pool in that bowl and that's a little drag fold as the hanging wall has moved down because we can see that the limestone units that I'm stood on have been displaced downwards. We've got a series of structures which have developed here. And we can see that really nicely on the aerial pho photograph as well. So if you compare what we can see in the field with the aerial photograph, you can really see the extent of the structures and how the beds have been deformed as they've moved along these features. We're now looking at that fault surface which has got those drag folds in the hanging wall. You can see really nicely above me the limestone beds jutting out and the edge of those lime, limestone beds sticking up and then they've been truncated by this nice planar structure. So we've got a planar break in our stratigraphy. This is a lovely example of a fault. On the fault surface itself, there's this kind of browny, mottly stuff, which is probably some kind of fine carbonate, which is a bit eroded as we're, you know, this is under the sea at high tide. But we can also see some nice lines or sort of striations which are being picked out by these minerals. So we can see that there's been movement down dip on this structure. And as we can see that the limestone beds have been displaced downwards and we've got that drag fold, we can tell that this is an extensional or normal um, fault. And what is excellent about this locality is we can see the extent, this three-dimensional extent of the structure. And so we can follow it all the way along the beach and eventually up into the cliff. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a bit of a walk down here and what is really interesting is the throw on this fault which is the amount of displacement there's been an extension there's been on this fault changes as we go along. So you can see the three-dimensional nature of how faults, they're not uniform features, you're going to have different amounts of motion as they propagate through the rocks. In this part of the fault we've got something really cool preserved. We've got a little bit of the hanging wall which is stuck onto the fault. So you can see that limestone jutting up above being truncated by our sort of whoops, east southeast striking fault zone here. We've got our fault surface with our slicken lines on it and then the other side we can see this shale um, abutted against the fault as this hanging wall has moved downwards and this block here it's difficult to tell for sure, it might correlate to that block up there, but it's also kind of fallen down as this hanging wall has moved along the fault zone. So we carry on going down this fault, bit of live action. You can see that we can carry on seeing this buff fault surface which is ahead of me. Been following along this structure, this lovely kind of buff um, fault plane with the nice striations, and at this point something really interesting happens. 
the fault plane sort of bifurcates into two surfaces. So at this point, it splits and we have a one surface that's going off along to this kind of waterfall on the beach and then another one which is a bit more prominent which carries on into the distance and they match up with two faults that we can see clearly in the cliff. So what this is showing us in three dimensions is that faults aren't just nice linear planar structures that just go on forever. What happens naturally is they end up breaking into multiple sections and we might have relay ramps which connect those different sections together. So we've now followed this normal fault along and it's split into multiple surfaces. So we can see this kind of main surface still over here, it's trending east-west roughly and it's going up into the cliff behind me. We can see some nice fault rocks in the cliff. But what's interesting and we can see in this three-dimensional exposure is that we've got multiple surfaces that it's splitting into and they're kind of winding their way across. So we've got one over here, we've got another one over here, and then finally an, a, a third one over there which is going up into another major structure in the cliff. So this is just an excellent example of the fact that structures are not simple, they do split into multiple surfaces as we get these steps of extension happening.